Hi, my name is Ingrid and my business is Canary Wellness. Today we will be brewing a new batch of Jun Tea. And Jun Tea is a unique strain of kombucha. Um, and what makes it unique is that the culture that we're using, um, called a SCOBY, is actually fed with honey and green tea instead of the usual black tea and sugar that's used for a regular kombucha brew. Uh, one of the things that you might be able to see is that this SCOBY is starting to drop yeast strings into the brew and that's perfectly normal and highly favorable. Um, the SCOBY itself is a yeast and bacteria culture um, and the word SCOBY is actually an acronym. We are focused on um, helping people clean out the toxins in their body and provide more energy and bring vitality back into their lives. And that's one of the reasons that I'm so big on the gin tea that we'll be making today. Um, gin tea is a very unique type of kombucha. Um, the beautiful thing about the gin tea is that it's actually uh, the, the SCOBY culture is fed with green tea and honey rather than using black tea and sugar. The, the flavor of Jun tea is a lighter, softer, and generally um, more palatable flavor. So it has this nice soft profile. Um, it's less sour than um, kombucha generally is. Okay, we're ready to um, make our new brew, our new batch of brew. In this one gallon jar and I've used a jar with a nice wide mouth so that I can get my hand in easily when, when I want to take the SCOBY out. I've poured nine cups of filtered water and it's room temperature water. We don't want to use boiling water when we're dissolving the honey because it will, um, it might kill the enzymes that are in the honey and interfere with the fermentation process when we add the SCOBY. So this is filtered water. If you don't have a filtration system at home, you can boil water and let it cool down. We want to get the chlorine out of it so it doesn't interfere with the fermentation. So in nine cups of water, I'll be adding one cup of honey. You can actually use three quarter to one cup of honey. And I always go for a scant one cup. This is organic unpasteurized honey. We don't want pasteurized honey because again the enzymes have been killed through the heating process. And we just pour that right into the water. Try and let every bit of honey drip in there without using my spatula on the side of the jar just because I want it down into the water. And it takes a few minutes. You have to be patient dissolving the honey in the water this way. It takes a bit longer because it's room temperature, but it will all dissolve eventually. Our next step is to add the green tea. So with a Jun Scoby, we don't want any black tea um, feeding the culture at all. This is made with loose leaf tea. And one of the things that I'll mention about tea is you can actually use bags um, of green tea. So four to five bags of green tea that have been pre-steeped and then you want to cool the temperature of the tea down again so that you're not using um, hot liquid um, to brew the, the Jun tea. Um, one of the things with loose leaf tea is I actually use this and put my loose leaf tea in here and when I'm steeping it, it just nicely sits in the teapot and when I remove it, it's got all of the loose leaf tea. You don't want any little filaments of loose leaf tea in here at all. Um, any of that in the kombucha actually may produce mold. That's never happened for me. I'm really careful about making sure there's no loose tea in there. So. Again, four cups of, of pre-brewed tea. And that's nicely mixed. Now that we've combined the 
the green tea and the honey water, we're ready to actually take the SCOBY out from that, the brew we've just finished and transfer it over. And the interesting thing about this SCOBY is you'll see on the top that there's a white new SCOBY forming. Um, I'm going to leave it in the next brew, but probably the next batch when I'm ready to decanter this, I'll remove that and I'll have a new SCOBY ready to start a new batch. So this just goes nicely into there. And I'm going to just dry my hands. And we want to add about one cup of the already brewed jun tea in there to help the culture go. I just don't want any slippage. There we go. And basically, this is ready to um, now sit. So the best thing with a Jun Scoby um, or a batch of Jun tea is to um, set it into a quiet room and keep it at a temperature between 65 and 75 degrees. When you think your brew might be done and you can even start checking the flavor profile of it after the third day, all you do is you remove the cotton cloth from the top take a clean straw and I I just use a straw single use only after I've tested them tested the kombucha I actually recycle the straw so oftentimes by the time you're ready to test the scoby has covered the surface and it you actually just tuck the straw in around the scoby so you can get into the liquid and have a little sip and see if you like the flavor Well, for me, I do like mine a little sweeter, but this is too sweet. So I'm deciding that I'm going to brew it again and I'll probably check it in a couple of days. So you just cover it back up, put it back in its little nest. Okay, now that you've um, had a taste test of your gin tea um, and if, if you find that you're, it's not quite ready, just put it back to wherever you were storing it, um, make sure it's covered and then just keep testing it every day because the, ch the flavor profile will start to change really quickly and you want to get it at the way that you like the taste of it. Um, one of the little tips I would say, and I learned this from experience, is when you're storing it, it's nice if you can keep it in a cupboard but at a, a shelf where it's easy to um, get to. If you're storing it super high, you're, um, I found that I wasn't inclined to test it um, frequently enough or taste test it frequently enough. Just to remind you I've already taken a cup of um, the brew without flavor and I've used it for the next batch that I've already um, demonstrated and set aside. Now that I've tasted my Jun tea and I like the flavor of it I'm just gonna pour myself a little drink before I actually do the second fermentation. A second fermentation isn't required. I just do it because I like to flavor my Jun tea. So here we go. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Oh, I love that. It's ready for drinking, but you can flavor um, Jun tea with all kinds of things, fruit. And this just happens to be a bag of my Concord grapes that I picked in the summer and I've they were frozen I thawed them out and I'm going to mash them up before I put them into the two decantering jars that I have here but you can use any fruit watermelon in the summer um, you don't even need to use fruit you can use things like ginger um, and even flowers and I thought maybe this summer I would do um, elderberry flowers in there we have an elderberry farm close by so here we go. This is a bag of Concord grapes. These are actually seeded, so when it comes time for me to pour, um, pour off the fruit, I always have to do a little bit of straining because of all the seeds. I don't like to leave the seeds in there. But whoop, that's why we have a towel here because messes can happen. <laughs> I've got grape juice on here. Let me just seal this off properly. There we go. 
And truthfully, this is my very, very favorite flavor. I tried all different kinds, but I come back to my Concord grapes. And I always feel like I'm drinking wine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just mushing up the grapes that I have. I want um, the skins broken open and, so that the juice can really permeate into the jun tea. Um, so let me just mash them up a little bit. And I usually add for a two liter jar like this, about one cup of fruit, but you can play around with the flavoring. This becomes a personal preference and um, I might even add more fruit than I actually need to, but I love that really rich, potent flavor of the grapes. So I'm just gonna split this bag off. I'll pour some of the juice into each of these. And remember, before I'm, I did my flavoring, I poured off enough of the um, original jun tea to cover my, uh, to make my new batch of jun tea. Okay, so let me just finish dividing up the fruit. Yeah, I think I got really generous with this batch. This is probably a little more fruit than I usually use. Um, and I've even used as little as half a cup for each one of these jars. All right, now I'm ready to pour the jun tea um, over the fruit for the second ferment. Remember, before you start your second ferment and your flavoring, to take one cup of the original brew and set it aside and save it for the next batch coming up. Okay, here we go. I'm pouring off um, the gin tea into these jars with the grapes. And one of the things that happens, just like with uh, unfiltered apple cider vinegar, you'll see that there's a bit of the mother at the bottom and loose, so I kind of try and divvy it up between the two jars. I'm, I, some people like to strain that all off. I don't. I think it's all goodness that's added into the whole brew. Get every last drop. The second fermentation with the fruit or flavoring in will only be about two or three days. And when you wanna check in to see if you like the flavor, very carefully release the seal to release the gases from the fermentation that are there. Once you've strained off the fruit, you're ready to bottle up. And my preference is always in glass, so you can use jars like this or find fancy bottles. Thank you for joining me today in making the Jun Kombucha Tea and I invite you to visit my website www.canarywellness.com and there I'll post all the amazing benefits of this beautiful probiotic elixir and also the recipe.